Hey everybody, Mr. Judson here. So, I, I, you know, it's pre-calculus is funny because a lot of the stuff that I teach is is more of a, a review of things that maybe we learned before. Now, I know last year with being out with COVID, we probably didn't learn as much as we should have in Algebra 3, 4. Um, and so I'm pretty confident for a lot of us, this is something that's brand new, okay? Logarithms. Um, why, why do we have logarithms? Well, I'll just give you a quick example. Um, if I was trying to solve this equation, 3 raised to what power equals 8? Well, I know 3 squared is 9, so it's got to be less than 2, my exponent. So I don't know, 3 raised to the 1 point, who knows what. That's the whole idea of logarithms, is they help us solve equations where the variable is, is in the exponent. So that's what we're working towards. Um, but it's going to take us a little bit of time to get there. First of all, we have to learn what logs are and try and understand them. Um, and we've got to start with some basics. Okay? But, but eventually, I want to get to even more complicated equations than this and, and be able to solve those. All right, so let's talk about our definition here. Um, and, and this is kind of a weird definition because it doesn't, you read it, it doesn't make sense to you. If log base b, okay, so that, that b is written down a little bit lower, it's a subscript, okay, of m is equal to x, then this has to be true. b raised to the x power has to equal m. Well, here's, here's something that I see here. Um, right here I see that x is really an exponent. And I, I did that on purpose. I chose the variable x because it sounds like exponent. And, but up here we're saying that x is equal to this. So if x is an exponent, that must mean that when we say logs, we're really talking about exponents. Okay? When I, when I see a log function, I have to, in my mind, I have to, and I have to force myself to think this way. I have to think, okay, we're talking about exponents now. And then I've got to think about all the rules of exponents and how they work. Okay? So that's, that's really an important thing in dealing with logs, is to realize that every time I see that, that right there is an exponent. And, and I know it because if, if x is an exponent here, then it's going to be an exponent there, and exponents have to be equal to exponents. That's what it is, okay? Now, something else that um, people have, have told me, it, it's not something I learned, but when someone told me, I was kind of like, okay, I get it, I see it, if that helps you remember, that's great. Um, they said that in order to convert something from log form to exponential form, Okay? This is logarithmic form, this is exponential form. Right? We've been looking at exponential equations, and when the variable's in the exponent, that's, that's what we call it, exponential form. So if I want to convert something from log form to exponential form, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to swirl it. You know, swirl it, what does that mean? I didn't know until somebody showed me this. You circle your base, and you just swirl your way around. <laughs> okay? So b raised to the x power, remember this is always the exponent over here, is equal to m. All right? So um, let's, let's write down something here with some, some numbers to help this make sense to us. Okay? And, and I'm going to start with, uh, because our number system is base 10, that's what I want to start with. So I'm going to say 10 raised to the third power is equal to, all right, so 10 times 10 times 10, that's 1,000. So that's written in exponential form. If I want to change this to log form, this is my base, right? That's why we use b here for base. So I want to write log base 10. So log base 10. And I know that logs are equal to exponents, so my exponent here is 3, and so I must be doing log base 10 of 1,000, and that gives me the answer 3. All right? That's kind of what we're saying there. Now, see, if this was log base 9, I can't really do that on my calculator. All right, so on our graphing calculators, people have 
kind of tried to reprogram and, and put some things in there to make it happen, but the calculator itself doesn't allow us to work in anything other than base 10. There's some additional programming that goes on if we can do it a different way. That's why I chose this, this base. So if, if I go back to my calculator here, um, and, and I guess one more thing to, to understand. You know how if I write something like x plus 4, and I say, what's the coefficient in front of x? We would all say it's 1. You know, we didn't write anything there, and it's just understood that if you don't write anything, that coefficient is 1, which is absolutely right. You know, what's the exponent for x? Well, it's x to the 1 power. If you don't write it there, it's understood to be a 1. Well, if I, if I write this, log of 1,000, it's understood to be base 10 if there's no base written there. Just the same way we know this is a 1 and this is a 1. Okay? If I don't write a base, it's just automatically understood to be base 10 because that's our number system. All right, so if I take my calculator, here's our log button right here. If I go log of 1,000, close that off with a parenthesis. I don't have to put a base. I really can't put a base in here. Um, but it's understood to be base 10, and there's my answer, 3. Okay? Now, if, if someone was to say, well, you know, what does this really mean to me? What's, what's the meaning of that expression? Well, if I wrote in the base, base 10, what logs mean, we've got we to say this in our head again, logs are exponents. That's what I'm looking for is an exponent. So 10 raised to what power equals 1,000? Well, 10 times 10, that's 100 times 10 more, that's, a th oh, to the third, which we're back to our answer again, all right? So that's, that's what logs are, they're exponents, and when we see something like this, we're saying that base raised to what exponent equals that number right there, okay? So let, let's, let's do another one of those real quick. Let's just say that we want to evaluate each of these. First of all, I've got log base 2 of 32. And I've got log base 4 of 16. Why don't you try and figure out what each of those are equal to? All right, so, so I'm looking for an exponent. I, I just want to know 2 raised to what power equals 32? All right, so 2 times 2 is 4, times 2 is 8, times 2 is 16, times 2 is 32. That was five twos, right? There we go. There's, there's my answer. Now, all I'm doing is trying to evaluate an expression of logs. I'm not really trying to convert it to a different form. All right, so my answer is 5. Over here, uh, 4 raised to what power equals 16? Well, 4 times 4, that's 16, that's 2. There's my exponent, right? So logs are equal to exponents. Now, if I, if I want to rewrite this real quick, let me do a little bit of color coordination here. 2 raised to what power equals 32? And that would be 2 to the 5th power, right? This base raised to this power equals this. There's, there's that swirl thing again, right? Swirl it. And for this one over here, I've got 4 raised to some exponent equals 16, and that exponent was 2. So I've, I've now converted both of these from log form to exponential form. They didn't ask me to do that. I'm just doing it, okay, so we can see it. All right, so, so when we write log as in L-O-G, we're talking about a common log. Um, the reason we refer to this as a common log is because usually it's used with base 10, and that's what's common to us in, in our numbering system is we work in a base 10 number system, okay? But there's, there's another base that's really common as well. And what that does is it gives, it gives us 
something called a natural log. Okay? And it gets its own name. It's LN. If you look on your calculator, you know, here's the log button, here's the LN button. So a lot of times people wonder, what's that for? Well, LN is natural log. Now, why they didn't call it NL, <laughs> I have no idea. I have no idea why they did that. Don't know. Okay? But a natural log really means log base E. And, and just like base 10 happens all the time, because that's our number system, base E happens all the time because we live in a world where things change continuously. Remember that word? When, we first, when I first introduced that number E, I told you it has to do with things that are changing continuously. And then we just did some, some problems about investing money, you know, where we talk about compounding interest maybe monthly, so 12 times a year, versus compounding interest continuously. And then we go to the PERP formula and use that number E. So because things in our real world change continuously all the time, like the value of cars, okay, or investments, or population, whether it's animals or people or, or uh, you know, um, whatever you call marine biology, you know, stuff that's in the ocean, populations are changing continuously. And so whenever we talk about um, a population of something, we, we want to use natural logs as opposed to a common log. Since this base happens so often, what they did is they just gave it its own special name. So instead of having to write log base E, because you know that'd take a really long time, right? We could just shortcut it and just write LN. So I have to write two letters instead of four. So I'm really saving a lot of time. Yeah, I, I, you know, I don't know why math people did what they did, but that's the reason behind it, okay? So if I ask you guys to evaluate natural log of 7, so let's, let's go back up and review what we just talked about. When I asked you what log of 4 is, that meant 4 raised to what exponent equals 16? Okay, well now, this is really log base E. I, you know, I, I wouldn't write this down normally, but this means log base E of 7. And so now we're saying E raised to what exponent equals 7? Well, because we have a calculator button, I can figure that out. So I go to my calculator and I go natural log of 7. And there it is, 1.946. <clears throat> so E raised to the 1.946 should equal 7. Let's test it real quick. Let's just make sure. All right, so I'll clear this off. I'm going to go E. So remember, down here where the natural log is, we got the E to the X button. So I'm going to go second e to the x. I want to raise it to the 1.946. And there we go. I got 7. Almost. <laughs> right? I actually got a little bit higher than 7. I got 7.0006. You know, why didn't I get exactly 7? Well, did I write down the exact answer here? No, I rounded it to three digits, right? So, so I didn't really put the full number in here, and so I really shouldn't expect to get exactly seven, but I should get pretty close to it. So if, you know, if I did that again, let me clear this off. If I go natural log of seven, okay, there we go. Now I'm going to do E raised to, I'm going to put that entire decimal number in there, right? Um, I'm going to see. I guess I have to punch it in on this calculator. You guys could just arrow up and hit enter and it'll, it'll stick it in there. I don't get to do that. Um, point nine, nine, four, five, nine. Uh, 1.0149. Now, should I get exactly 7 now? I, I don't think so. That's still a rounded number. There's more digits afterwards that I can't see. 
So I'm still not expecting to get exactly the right number, but I, I am expecting to get even closer to 7. So let's see. Oh, well, there we go. <laughs> I got really close to 7, right? My guess is that the calculator um, probably had something like 7.00000000000, so many zeros that it couldn't really display it, and so they just said, let's just call it 7. Or maybe it was 6.9999999999 on forever, and they said, ah, oh, you know what's so close, let's just call it 7. All right? Okay. So, so natural log just means we're doing log base e. So e raised to that exponent should equal this. Here's, here's that swirl thing again. This base raised to this exponent should equal 7. All right, so okay. let's try uh, a couple examples here. All right? We want to convert each of these into log form. Right? right now they're in exponential form. I want you guys just to rewrite it in log form. Okay? Go ahead and try it. It shouldn't take you long. All right, so this is my base right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write log base 3. And I know logs are equal to exponents, so this has to equal 4. So it must be log base 3 of 81. And, and what we're saying here is 3 raised to what exponent equals 81? It must be 3 to the 4th. All right, if I'm going to do this one, I've got log base e raised to, let's see, I know logs are equal to exponents, so negative 4.1 over here. And so log base e of 0 0.0165 should equal that. If I swirl this, I come back to what I have written here. All right, so both of those are written in log form. Almost. If I did this on a test, I'm going to lose half a point. And, and the reason is, is log base E has its own name. I, I don't want to stop here. I want to go one step farther and go natural log of 0 0.0165 is equal to a negative 4.1. Okay? Don't ever leave it as log base E because it gets its own special name. We've got to make sure and write it using the natural log. All right, um, so one thing just to make sure we understand this. They will never write something here that's not true. This will always be true, and this always needs to be true as well. We're not going to ask you to convert something that's false. You know, if I said 3 raised to the fifth power equals 2, that's not even true. So how could I convert it to another form that would be incorrect? All right? I say that because sometimes people get asked to rewrite this in exponential form. And they'll write something like this down. 3 to the 81st power equals 4. All right, what's next? And I'm like, what? Come on. Please don't tell me stuff like that. <laughs> 3 times itself 81 times equals 4? No. I, you know, I, I always have this thing about you know, guessing in math. It happens. As a teacher, I see it all the time. Right? But let's make an intelligent guess. Let's not write down something that's clearly not true. There's no way 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 times 3, 81 times, is going to equal 4. This is like, this number is so large, it probably doesn't even fit on the calculator. Now I'm curious. 3 raised to the 81st power. Look at that, scientific notation. i got to move this decimal point this way, 38 places. We're talking about gazillions. <laughs> you know, I don't even know how big that number is. It's way past billions and trillions. Way past that. Um, that's, that's a big number. It's definitely not four. All right? All right. Let's make sure we write down intelligent things if we're going to make a guess. All right. So let's see. This is now written in log form, and so is this right here. Let's try another one. All right, so here we're being asked to convert to exponential form. Right now, both of these are in logarithmic form. We just want to convert it to exponent form. You guys go ahead and try it. So I always feel like if you just stop and think about the things that we know for sure, 
logs are exponents. There's my exponent. This is my base. I ought to be able to do this, right? Base 5 raised to the third power equals 125. I want to make sure this is a true statement. I don't want to say 125 raised to the third power equals 5. That doesn't make sense. Right? Here's, here's our swirl thing. Swirl it. 5 raised to the third power equals 125. Now, for this one, you know, you might look at that and go, well, you can't do it, there's no base. But we know there is a base, right? Because natural log really means log base E of 4 equals 1.386. So if I swirl that, E raised to this exponent should equal 4. So E raised to the 1.386 should equal 4. You know, a lot of times I tell people, you know, take time to check your work on a test. Take time to check things. Well, if I want to check this, I just got to do E raised to that and see if I get 4 for an answer. That's a, that's a quick, easy thing to check. So, let's see. Here's my E to the X button. I'm going to put 1.386. I'm kind of thinking maybe it's not exactly 4. Maybe it's just close to 4 because of that decimal number. And yeah, 3.9988. It's pretty close to 4, but it is off by just a little bit. But at least I know what I have here makes sense, right? All right, let's try another one. All right, so I've got three problems here. Um, this one they want us to evaluate it, but I think they want us to try and do this without the calculator. There will be some problems that will say this, you know, do this without your calculator. Okay? These two, um, I actually want you to use your calculator. And it's really just about making sure we know where the buttons are, making sure we know how to hit things, making sure we're getting the right answer. Okay? So I want us to do this on our own, do this on your calculator. All right, so what this means is, you know, here, here's something else that I do sometimes. Sometimes I'm just like, I don't know what the answer is, so let's just call it X. And so what we're really saying here now is 4 raised to what power equals 256. I'm thinking of that swirl thing again, right? And that's what logs mean. 4 raised to what exponent equals 256? Well, let's see. If I go 4 times 4, that's 16. Times 4, that's 64. Times 4, I think that might be 256, but let's just double check. 4 raised to the fourth power, 256. All right? So there it is. This equals... We'll say x equals, just so that we're saying that's what number goes here. <clears throat> we'll go ahead and write this as x equals 4. Since I put an x in there, that way I know what the answer is. If, if somebody else is, is able to, you know, you're kind of sitting there and you're going, okay, 4 times 4, that's 16 times 4, 64 times 4, yeah, 256. If your mind can do all that stuff, then great, just go like this. Equals 4. There's my answer. This one, I know that this means log base E of 4.67. So in my head, I'm now going, okay, 2.718. Remember what that number is? 2.718. Raised to what power equals this? <laughs> yeah, right. That's not going to work. Um, so they just want us to be able to hit the calculator buttons here to get this answer. So pull the calculator up. I've got natural log of 4.67, 1.541. All right, and then if I want to do this one over here, I'm going to go log. Remember, it's always base 10 if it's not written there, and our calculators only do base 10. Log of 82. 1.914. So I want you to think in your head real quick, what does that mean? 1.9141. What does it mean? Well, if, if this is base 10, 
we're saying 10 raised to what exponent equals 82? So 10 raised to the 1.914, that must equal 82. Let me check it real quick. Clear this off. I'm going to go 10 raised to the 1.914. And I got an answer pretty close to 82. You know, again, this was a rounded answer. Because I rounded it off, I probably threw this thing off by a little bit. Um, but that's pretty close to 82. So I, I feel okay with that. All right? Anybody wondering, like, what does that even mean when you raise an ex to an exponent of 1.914? Like, we know that if you raise something to the one-half power, that really means a square root. We've seen that before. Um, if I raise something to the second power, of course, I know that means multiply a number times itself twice. How do you multiply a number times itself 1.914 times? Yeah, that gets pretty complicated, doesn't it? <laughs> There are some decimal numbers I can explain, and there are some that I can't. Um, but we just have to understand that exponents can be any kind of number. It does not have to be a whole number. Decimals, fractions. You want to raise something to the square root of 2? You can do that. It works. <laughs> All right? All right. Let's see what else we got here. So the other day we talked about the one-to-one -one property, right? And I, and I think I told you guys in the video, it comes in a lot of different formats. Here's another format. So if, if I say that the, the log base b of x is equal to log base b of y, I've got a log on both sides, I've got the same base. The only way these can be equal is if I'm taking log base b of the same thing. So x has to equal y. That's what we're saying here, okay? If the natural log of x equals the natural log of y. This is a comma. Okay, so I've got natural log on both sides. We note these both mean log base e. And if they're equal to each other, it means I'm taking log base e of something on one side and something on the other and saying that they're equal. The only way that happens is if x and y are equal to each other. Okay? So that, that would have to happen. So, so we're going to see some one-to-one -one property um, problems again using logs just like we did on the other the other day. I kind of feel like this is something that we should be able to get like if you know the thing about school is we want to learn how to think right and if we are thinking people we should be able to figure this out. I'm going to show you what I mean in just a second. Um, I always get a little frustrated with people look at stuff and go I don't know. Well, wait, wait, we haven't even thought yet. Think about it for a minute. No I don't know. What, what do you mean I don't know? You didn't even wait until I finish my sentence. I don't know them. You know, we have to be willing to think. We have to be willing to try. Okay? Let me show you what I mean. All right. Uh, so they want us to solve each of these equations. All right? So if I have never seen this before, and I don't even know what a log means. You know, sometimes people look at this and go, never seen it before, can't do it. Well, we're thinking creatures, right? If I just stare at this for a minute and I go, uh, this, I didn't write this very well, this is supposed to be an equal sign. If I just stare at this and I go, look, I'm doing the same thing on both sides, whatever log base 2 means. I'm doing the same thing on both sides. I'm doing it to this and to this. And somehow I'm generating an answer that's equal. Well, it only makes sense that you have to take log base 2 of the same thing here as you have here. So our, our one to one property says x plus one has to equal four. Okay? I can't do log base two of seven and say that's equal to log base two of four. Right? They're not equal. Two raised to what power equals seven and two raised to what power equals four. I'm not going to get the same answer. The only way I get the same answer is if I'm doing two raised to what power of the same thing. These have to be the same. I feel like that's stuff people should be able to figure out by just staring at something for a few minutes and, and being logical. Okay, I want us to be logical. So now if I subtract one from each side, I get x equals three. Oh, that makes sense. If I put a three in there, three plus one is four. Ah, so log base two of four equals log base two of four. 
I get it now. All right. Let's try this next one. I'm taking the natural log of both sides, and I'm getting answers that are equal. So the only way that happens is if I do natural log of 23 here and natural log of 23 here. So this has to equal 23. So x squared minus 2 has to equal 23. Um, I, I could solve this by factoring if I want, but because that's the only x, I could just move this over here and say x squared equals 25. Now take the square root. It means x equals plus or minus 5. So all of a sudden, plus or minus, wait a second, does that work? Let's just double check. If I put a 5 here and I square it, I get 25. Minus 2, that's 23, so natural log of 23, yep. If I put a negative 5 there, negative 5 squared is 25. 25 minus 2, that's, that's 23, so yeah, that works. But what if I wasn't squaring this? Okay, this is my correct answer. But we just have one thing we need to look at here uh, that just kind of came up. What if I had to do the natural log of a negative number? Can you do that? You know, I don't, we shouldn't even answer yes or no right now, we should, but we should wonder, oh, could you? What is that equal to? Well, I don't know. Let's just, let's just make up a variable. I'll just call it n. So this is log base e of a negative 5 is equal to n. And so if I swirl this, you know, a lot of times with logs and exponential functions, if you're not really sure what to do, convert it to another form. Right? Convert to another form. That might all of a sudden make things make sense or give us an idea of what to do. So we're trying to figure out, can you even take the, log, the natural log of a negative number or even a common log of a negative number? And if I, if I swirl that, what we're saying is e raised to the nth power equals negative 5. And so can I take a number, 2.718, and raise it to an exponent and produce a negative value? And, and I think we already know the answer to that question. We, we learned about graphing exponential functions, and, and we said that there's going to be a vertical asymptote right here, and then when we graph our function, we'll either see exponential growth or we'll see exponential decay. And, and right there we're showing that you can't make this function negative. It doesn't fall below the x-axis, okay? Unless we shift everything down, but that's different. It's not going to fall below that asymptote, all right? So there is no way to take a positive number and raise it to an exponent and get a negative result. So what, what does that mean to us? If, if you didn't understand the rest of it, what it means to us is you cannot take a natural log of a negative number. And you cannot take a log of a negative number. You can't do it. If we look at our graphing calculator, all right, so if I, if I go log of a negative 5 and I hit enter, I get an error message, non-real answer. There's not a solution to that, okay? If I go to option two, go to, oh, there it is right there. You can't take the log of a negative number. If I do the natural log of a negative number, same message, okay? Can't do it. So we just want to be aware of that. Um, you know, this, this came back, uh, we started this conversation because of this right here. As soon as I saw that negative number, I started thinking, oh, can that be an answer? Well, it can, as long as you can plug it back in here and you're not taking the natural log of something negative. The moment you take a natural log or a log of a negative number, whatever caused that to happen, we need to throw that answer out. It doesn't work. That's what we have here for today, so let me get you guys a homework assignment. All right, so we're working on number 15. Um, this is our Thursday-Friday segment, depending on if you're third or fourth and sixth. We're on page 236. And, and so this part right here, 3 to 30 and 45 to 66, what we're doing is every third problem. 
So we're going to do 3, 6, 9, 12, 15. We're going to count by 3's until we get to 30. And then we'll jump up to 45. We'll hit 48, 51, 54. Every third problem. Okay? Um, and then here, 81 to 84, we'll do all, all four of those. All right? So there it is. Um, I guess that's it for this week. You guys take care. I uh, hope you have a good weekend, and I'll see you next week. All right, stay safe. Bye.